Welcome back. And as we've reported, several sources, government officials among them, have told NBC News that Robert Mueller's work is nearly done and he'll likely submit a report to the Attorney General Bill Barr in the next week or so. From there, Barr would presumably review the report, decide what information might become public. Earlier today, Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani told USA Today it's been weeks since Mueller's team had contacted the president's attorneys. Quote, we expect something in the next two weeks, Giuliani said. He said the legal team has been preparing a report of its own that, depending on Mueller's findings, may be made public. Quote, if Mueller clears the president, we walk away and say thank you. If it's damaging, then we will respond. Also today, former acting U.S. Solicitor General Neil Katyal, who was our chief lawyer before the Supreme Court and who at the Department of Justice helped draft the original special counsel rules of the road, wrote an op-ed in the New York Times about what we might expect from Mueller's report. He writes this, quote, the report is unlikely to be a dictionary thick tome which will disappoint some observers, but such brevity is not necessarily good news for the president. In fact, quite the opposite. A concise Mueller report might act as a roadmap to investigation for the Democratic House of Representatives, and it might also lead to further criminal investigation by other prosecutors. A short Mueller report would mark the end of the beginning, not the beginning of the end. For more, with us tonight, Jill Colvin, White House reporter for the Associated Press, and Nelson Cunningham, former federal prosecutor and alumni of the Clinton administration. He's also former general counsel to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Welcome to you both. Jill, um, is the White House near ready for this report to come out? And as you guys say, if I'm allowed to follow up, how could they be? The White House is certainly ready for the Mueller investigation to be over. This has been a cloud that has been hanging over the president's head uh, since the day he took office. He has been very eager for this to all be over. The question, of course, is whether even if even after Mueller submits his report, whether it actually will be over, as Neil argued uh, in that New York Times op-ed, even if this is a very brief, very short piece of uh, summary that winds up being uh, released to the American public after Mueller uh, submits his report to uh, the attorney general. And if the attorney general then decides to release some of it publicly, uh, there are still so many tentacles of this investigation that could continue, you know, various investigations in different courts by different governments uh, that could continue on long after the Mueller report is over. That said, you know, the White House has been very careful uh, to try to distance itself from anything to do with the Mueller investigation. Investigation. You have to remember that this has been an administration with a tremendous amount of turnover. So there aren't that many individuals currently serving in the White House who worked in the campaign, and there aren't that many who uh, worked in the White House at the time of, you know, the Flynn uh, back and forth and, and all of that in the early days when some of the obstruction of justice, uh, you know, accusations were, were circling. Um, and as a result, uh, they've really tried to push all of the PR, all of the pushback to uh, the outside counsel and specifically to Rudy Giuliani, the person whom the president hired to be his attack dog on cable television, who has spent months and months and months now trying to discredit, discredit the Mueller team, trying to discredit this investigation. And Giuliani has been out there, you know, saying that if they're unsatisfied with uh, Mueller's findings, they've got their own report that they're going to put out there trying to undermine uh, whatever Mueller's findings are. Uh, but as we know, over the last couple of weeks. There's been a lot of discontent around the White House among allies of the president, concerned that Giuliani is not the right person and has been not effective in defending the president. And at that, this point, that's who the president's got on his team. Uh, hey, Nelson, uh, Jill's news organization, along with a few others, has been very cautious about the reporting on this. Uh, uh, some are going all in, just uh, stating as a fact the report is, is coming out. Uh, Mueller's work is about to wrap up. I noted with great interest uh, some comments you made to one of our producers. You're a contrarian on this, and you're not sure at all uh, that it's coming to a rapid end. Well, I ask, I ask myself, why now? Why would this be the time that Mueller would choose to uh, conclude his investigation and issue his report? He's just indicted Roger Stone. Uh, Roger Stone could someday be a cooperating witness. Now, he'd be Mueller would be crazy to ever put Roger Stone on a witness stand because the man is a walking credibility gap. But Stone could give him an amazing roadmap to what the president told him, 
what he said to Assange, what he said to Corsi, lay it all out, and then give Mueller the ability to then go and develop the further evidence. Classic technique. Why end when the Roger Stone story isn't done? We have that Supreme Court case over and D.C. Circuit case over the last several months, furiously litigating Mueller trying to get evidence from a state-owned foreign corporation. That hasn't been done yet. He hasn't gotten that evidence yet. You've got the Corsi piece of litigation out there. You've got Miller, uh, who was sued, doing it. There's a lot of loose ends here. Why now? The only reason people can point to was, well, Rod Rosenstein is about to resign. Uh, but and Rosenstein has been the gatekeeper and the protector of the Mueller investigation. But Bob Barr is now in the attorney general's seat. And Barr is, by all lights, a principled man, a very serious, solid mainstream lawyer. And more to the point, he's also an old friend of Bob Mueller's. They served together in the Bush 41 Justice Department. Uh, Bob Barr described him as, quote, a good friend in his confirmation hearings. I think Mueller even attended Barr's daughter's weddings. So Mueller should trust Barr to handle the report properly. Why do it now? It doesn't quite fit for me, but it could be true. Jill, to my ears, there were way more than enough quotes in what Nelson just said for a dandy AP piece on the Mueller investigation. But anyway, um, let's keep this in context, Jill. Even if these reports are correct that it is coming to a rapid end, you've got everything else. You have a Democratic-controlled House of Representatives, and you have these spinoff cases, including but not limited to the Justice Department's New York office, the Southern District of New York. Exactly. Uh, so even if, even when this case comes to a close, and, and to, to be clear, I mean, all indications are that this now is wrapping up at some point, uh, you know, whether this happens before or after the president's trip uh, to Vietnam for his second North Korea summit, it is expected to be wrapping up sometime soon. There are signals uh, that, that that is the direction that this is headed in. Uh, this is by no means the end of this. Uh, we've already got the two other investigations that we know of, uh, the Michael Cohen investigation that's working its way through the Southern District of New York. We've got uh, that investigation into uh, the president's inaugural inauguration fund and whether he was accepting the, the that inauguration fund was accepting uh, illegal contributions from foreign governments. Uh, we have at this point, uh, it's unclear what Mueller might uh, tell us about other threads, other you know investigations, other leads that he might have uh, for the Justice Department per to pursue, but also for other agencies to pursue. We also, of course, have the Democrats who are now in charge uh, with subpoena power in the House. And as Neil argues in that New York Times op-ed, uh, you could have Mueller report essentially serving as sort of a roadmap uh, for all of those different investigators of all these different trails that they could go down all of these different areas and what's different uh, between the Mueller investigation and for instance you know the House Democratic committees is that the president has no purview uh, over the House Democratic committees the president has no purview over what for instance the New York uh, Attorney General decides to do mm -hmm. and so this saga for the president this legal saga uh, it doesn't appear to be anywhere close to being over as the president hopes Nelson uh, I'm fascinated by what you just said about the Attorney General and I and and I want to go back at that as my last question to you. Uh, this AG has, as I see it, three audiences, the American public, members of Congress, and the man who just appointed him, Attorney General. Uh, do you think if we took a poll of guys of your age and ilk and similar resume, they would view him as a steady institutionalist? They would express the the kind of hope in him that you just did because the members of the opposition are going to be looking at this attorney general with with yearning in their eyes with hope in their eyes that he does when called upon by history and robert Mueller the right thing uh, certainly Barr's reputation in washington going back to uh the reagan years going back to the bush 41 years is of a very serious sober mainstream uh lawyer. Uh, he then went on to serve as general counsel for some great companies. Uh, he's had a great career. It's hard to believe that a man like this would want to go out and end his career. He didn't have to come back and be attorney general for a second time. He'd already done that job when he was in his 40s. Why come back and do it a second time only to handle it in a way that most lawyers that he knows would think was a, was a swing and a miss? Hard to believe that he would not handle it in the, the straight-up, straightforward fashion 
that say we might have expected from Murad Rosenstein. Again, another serious lawyer who believes in law enforcement and believes in the principles of the Justice Department. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.